up with you guys. Um, having been standing on this uh, train platform uh, for the better part of 20 minutes at this point, your party huddled fairly close together and keeping watch as you had been alerted to some uh, potential uh, individuals that'd be interested in seeing you. There are a number of other individuals uh, ranging from seemingly denizens of defiance to uh, merchant types, uh, some uh, very well-dressed and well-to-do folk that seem to be making a pointed effort to stand apart from the rabble. But all of you have been waiting for the uh, proper train to come that will take you to Twain. Compared to um, like a real life train track, the lightning rail system of Twain uh, is just a single, it's a, a monorail type arrangement. So there's just this single band of metal uh, that runs along the track, but it is guarded on both sides uh, every couple dozen feet or so by just a single, almost like a blown up sewing needle of a fence post that's just jammed into the ground uh, going uh, presumably as far as the eye can see. Those of you more familiar with uh, Twain's transportation network like Venali or uh, potentially Mish, given that there's an output outlet near your city, would know that there's usually not a huge amount of worry of like uh, wild animals or people interfering with the train line because get too close to those fence posts and the uh, electricity that powers the lightning rail will discharge and shock the shit out of you. <laughs> but uh, keeping your yourselves well away from uh, potential danger, you wait until you hear the um, telltale sign for those of you that are uh, have are accustomed to the life of the southern city states of the low whine that grows higher pitched as the train pulls into the station. Um, it is not a sleek, futuristic bullet train. It still uh, has many of the trappings, heavy iron grade of the front billowing uh, smokestack at the top of the engine car that would make it seem uh, more rustic. But as it pulls to a stop, it's not the screeching of brakes you hear, but the discharge of uh, significantly accumulated static electricity as it sort of um, fills your sinuses with an ozone-like smell as the train comes to a stop. Finale just like takes a deep breath. Ah, the smell of progress. It's a lot cleaner smelling than Defiance usually, so. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not fair. How come your train smelled better? Because we're working with better technology. You're making your own. And she just grumbles. The individual cars will open, and some people will file out. You'd guesstimate no more than maybe uh, 30 to 50 people were pa passengers on this car. But as they file past you and prepare to head back into the city, some of the conductors will come out. Uh, there's one every few cars to address the uh, populace that are waiting. And the one that pulls up in front of you is a squat but portly goblin who seems to be uh, his belly rather tightly fit within the uniform that he's been made to wear. Uh, he will come up to your, your party and address you. Very sorry to uh, have to break this news to you, but our route heading towards the uh, cell shore has been cancelled for today. Why for? Well, un unfortunately, headquarters has been getting word that uh, there's some disturbances happening up there, and 
for line safety, we're having to reroute this train. We went to where? Heading it back to the main station in Twain, a la the Grey Feast line. Can you let us out? Or do we have to go with back? Well, um, where were you folks trying to get to? Well, I'm headed to Twain. You know what he said? Well, as long as you weren't uh, hoping to stop at the march, I suppose you could just get on the new route. Vinali's hackles are definitely up that at this sudden change so soon after they found out that they are wanted criminals, but is trying to play it off. Criminals is a strong word. In their eyes. I, yeah, okay. Of course, uh, many folks that ride these trains don't feel comfortable with uh, the line that takes them so close to the fog land, so... If you'd like to step back to the uh, Defiance platform, I'm sure they'd be able to negotiate a potential refund for you. Well, we do still have our talismans. I think we'll be okay. You'll see him uh, at the mention of that reach into a like, pouch at the side of his belt and he pulls out a very tiny, tightly rolled bit of paper, which he has to like unfurl very gently. And then he gets out from a different breast pocket a monocle and puts it on to read it. All routes uh, within proximity of the uh, Foglands provide complementary uh, one hour protection talismans located within your vehicle limited warranties may apply that will uh, assist you in case of accidental train derailment or fog breach of the cabin how, uh, how often does that happen? Uh, the document says I'm supposed to assure you very rarely oh god You know, what does your conscience want to tell us? I don't get paid to have a conscience, mister. Fair enough. <laughs> Mood. I was thinking that same thing. But if and you'd be so kind to make a decision so we can clear off the platform, either you get on the alternate route or you, uh, See about scheduling an alternative leave time. Well, I'm fine with the alternate route. If anything, it gets us there sooner, assuming there are no complications. I mean, there is going to be uh, complications, but I think that's probably our best. Very well, uh, I don't suppose you, uh, folks, and he kind of, like, um, does all of you a pretty firm look over, I don't suppose you'd be interested in upgrading to a deluxe package, uh, probably not. What, uh, what does that even include? Oh, better accommodations, for one, uh. This will be an overnight trip, so it will be a bit more comfortable for you, not in the sleeper car. There's uh, included meals, and with uh, if you pay an extra five gold, you get a drink voucher for the bar cart. What a... Is that an unlimited drink voucher? Limitations and uh, warranty supply, but you're welcome to inquire within. Okay, 
skating through there just with the trap, or...? If you start on the old ones, yeah. Let yeah, the... so if, if you... For the p ticket you guys paid, no. He's offering you could spend more money to uh, be upgraded to the plan that would include such a thing. But he's always happy to spend more money on food. It's always a mush. How much was the upgrade? So it's, uh, you guys paid two gold already. It would be 20 gold a person for uh, the deluxe package. That'd be an 18 increase. And you can pay an extra five for a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'll pay 20 to upgrade for more comfort overnight. Yeah, same. Yeah. Mish just wants food. Okay, so you guys uh, whip out a rather large amount of gold for random travelers to be having, and the goblin seems uh, legitimately a bit taken aback by the fact. Oh shit, these people actually have money. <laughs> Yeah, we look like schlubs. Well, well, uh, discerning customers, I see. If you'll follow me closer to the, uh, front of the train, we'll get you situated in the deluxe car, then. Alrighty, so. Let me, uh on the map a second that I'll get you guys situated. I had the fun of trying to make uh, the trains work in Roll20 this week. Oh god. Situate me, daddy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like how you're, you're just slumped over on my shoulder. <laughs> just holding on. Okay. Just drape you around your, around his neck like a stole. <laughs> it's a, it's a wolf fur coat, uh, scarf. <laughs> Where wolves have become fashion accessories. Alright, so, you are led on to the, uh, first class car where you are uh, given run of the the mill of this uh this car is your for your group i call this bed uh the goblin will uh after taking your your fees and uh handing over you handing over to you your updated tickets will say um now uh their car ahead of this is off limits that'll take you to storage although we'll be happy to take you to uh, uh, take any of your what's the word Belonging? stowing yeah yeah things you'd like stowed um, up to the car head but if you want to go back that way that'll lead you into the lounge and after that it's the bar cart I mentioned how does here's a question how does Mitty er, fit in this hallway here? Uh, very careful. <laughs> yeah, I would say, uh, and you know, the map's a little, I, I, I tried to make it movable around, but um, realistically, ceilings here probably not much bigger than eight feet, so Mitty probably is like having to kind of slunch a little bit. <laughs> Uh, the uh, beds, as you look into your private rooms, are th they would comfortably fit a, a single humanoid. They are um, nice and uh, luxurious, and uh, seem to probably have uh, like a, some sort of feathery down for the the pillows. And like again, midi, you're you're probably mm, half of your shin down will be hanging off the footboard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were, this was supposed to be comfortable. This is not. I mean, it's comfortable for me. I don't know what you're complaining about. Uh, 
But if there's uh, no other questions or concerns, I will uh, leave you all to your business. Well, I believe that's everything. All right, if you need anything, you can just holler and uh, our nearest associate will make their way towards you. And uh, with that, the little goblin will scurry off to the southern car, um, departing into what he called the lounge, and we'll leave you guys uh, to your business. So I think we're all in agreement that uh, if we're not being watched, we're certainly at the very least, uh, well, they're being aware monitored. that we're on this route. Yeah. Expecting an ambush of some kind, but uh, I don't know in what form it will come. Probably in the form of an ambush, as how most well, ambushes are. I, I mean in terms of, are they going to attack us on the train? Are they going to derail the train? There's a lot of ways this can come at us. I'll probably post it as, like, you know, official slash unofficial like search and seizure and we'll probably plant evidence or some bullshit you know how it is oh i should have mentioned uh to find would not have stood out to you as unusual finale but a interesting point of order for this train um the car let me make sure yeah so the car after the engine in the fuel car you noticed uh, the roof of it wasn't solid, and that's because the barrel of a very large cannon was sticking outside of the roof of that car. I can appreciate that. So the, the lightning rail uh, trains are armed in the case of, God forbid, a dragon flying overhead. So they're not defenseless, but um, that's just kind of standard for the course. Yeah, that was all, sorry. In the meantime, I can't help but think we're immediately next to the uh, storage cart. We could pull off a bit of a heist of our own. I have no idea what's in there, but probably something good. I think we should wait till we're closer to our destination to try that. So at least if we get caught, we can bail and we won't be too far away. Agreed. Ah, yes, right back to morally gray. Yeah. <laughs> well, can we at least agree that we won't start anything unless it comes to us first? No. Oh, well, I well that's unanimous. <laughs> well, I <can. laughs> A resounding. Uh... <laughs> Vinali might not be a rogue. But he is a Delver, and Delvers like stuff. Yeah, this is very true. So would you believe me if I told you that Cal also likes stuff? No. I mean, would you believe the pirate would rogue you... likes stuff? Who would have guessed? I mean, would you believe me if I told you that Nish also likes shiny things? That's because you're Cal. That's not surprising. I heard two different people. What happened? You said you worship fire. That's not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it's because you're a cat. You worship fire. He basically does. <laughs> I mean, fire isn't shiny. I would argue it's pretty shiny. It can be, yeah. I can see that, that point of argument. Um, as you guys are having this conversation, you will hear um, the engineer come on over the intercom that connects all the cars and will say that um, Lightning Rail is departing for Greyhound Station. 
Uh, please take your seats, or at the very least, uh, do not get out of the car while we are departing. And a few moments later, there will be a uh, bit of a jerk as the the train starts to move and your car will shake slightly. But once it seemingly gets up to some degree of speed, actually the uh, uh, there's very little motion. There, there, it's a very smooth ride, a lightning rail. And so after a brief bit of lurching, you feel, uh, for you, Cal, for instance, it's even, it, it feels a lot more like dry land than it does being on a boat. That's interesting. Okay. Looking out the uh, windows in your compartment, you can see the uh, you start to whip around and begin to rather rapidly leave uh, the spire of defiance behind, and you can see the countryside beginning to roll behind you. Hmm. Neat. You've never been on one before, Mish? Nope. At least not that I can remember at any rate. Never been in the fancy cabins before, but I've been on once or twice. But these uh, quarters have been provided for you. It was mentioned you'd have to sleep uh, at some point during the journey. There are uh, four beds at least, so someone's going to probably have to get a couch duty unless you want to double up, but... Uh, Mitty's fine on the floor. Mitty's fine on the floor? <laughs> and not even on a couch? I, I doubt the couch is big enough for Mitty either. Yeah, I mean... Grab the one couch out of the other room and put it... put them together. Then there's just that... like... I don't know. <laughs> <It's> just, <what? laughs> Just bust down the door, I'm stealing your couch. <laughs> I have a hard time imagining negotiating the couch out of the... I mean, they got it in there somehow, but... Negotiating the couch out of the door into that narrow hallway, and then into the other doorway, and turning it the other way around. See, the beauty is in, uh, I don't do that, I just bust through the door, or bust through the wall. You just take the separating wall down, yeah. Open concept. <laughs> what happened to the room? Well, it, funny story. There was this couch, you see. And it just okay, magically... Listen, listen, listen. Listen. <laughs> We wanted to put the couches together to make a bed with four sides. We wanted a super couch. Yeah. We wanted a section of uh... what? You know, a bed that you can't fall out of. It's a dog bed for Connery. Shut up. Connery says with his face pressed up against the window. <laughs> Do the windows open? <laughs> Can I open the window for Henry? I would say... I would say yes, although they do... The the it, the wind does whip pretty fast outside. So if you uh, stick your face out there, you'll have the, the cheeks being inflated. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jeremy Clarkson in the, uh, oh, God, the yeah. roadster. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I'm speed! But are you guys just going to... Uh stick around in your own facilities or you, do you wish to uh, explore any of the other cars uh, I'm... I mean 
mean, Mish is just fine just sitting there, just relaxing for a bit. Like, she's not expecting any trouble. I mean, come on, it's just a train ride. What's the worst that could happen? He said that the, uh, storage was up there. Uh, correct. Okay. Why must you do this? I, I think just the best evaluating the smart my play option. is to uh, Mission Impossible it, go out the window, climb on top of the train, jump to the next car. Why, when I can lock pick it? I imagine there's guards posted. You just dangle yourself over the edge of the car and look through the... You can have Mitty hold you, he probably won't be going anywhere. So, I, I do have this uh, set up. I can put you on top. <laughs> yeah, you did tell me that, didn't you? I can imagine just Mitty standing at the edge and holding. I forgot, I forgot your name for a second. Cal, by, by the ankle. Upside down. You know what, Mitty just looking completely unimpressed? Well, it depends on Mitty. Yeah, I do agree we shouldn't do anything quite yet with that, but uh, something to keep our uh, eyes and ears open for. Uh, point of order for that, did you guys check any of your belongings with uh, the storage facility? No. Nope. Secondary Don't problem. trust someone not to steal it. <laughs> I know who's on this ship. <laughs> uh, secondary point of order. What did you guys do with your horses and cart that you left in Defiance? Um, do they, do they they have them? Them? <laughs> we left them at the fire. Mrs. Fire family, and they can take care of them. <laughs> you know, there's a compartment for livestock they might have on the on the train. They, some of them will. This one does not. Yeah, can they you probably have to stay behind? Can you imagine how bewildered some poor horses would be going this fast? It's their dreams come true. Don't horses just want to go fast? Horses want to go fast. Yeah, I was more asking in terms of, did you leave them with, like, a, the church, or did you try and sell them? Uh, I say probably leave them with the church so that we can get them back at some point. If we named them, we probably kept them. If we haven't named them, then we probably sold them. <laughs> Didn't we name them, like, thing one and thing two or something like that? That does know. sound vaguely familiar, actually. I, I think you named them something like that, yeah. It was something either Disney or, like, musical-related or something like that. <laughs> Alright, but you guys, um, hunker down pass the time within your uh, amongst yourselves a um, couple hours are going to go by as the sun will begin to set and you're uh, definitely those of you that have not ridden uh, one of uh, Twain's trains before will uh, appreciate that I, got, I had to say that real slow to make sure <laughs> Twain's trains and automobiles You'll appreciate that in the course of the uh, like three to four hours you've been on uh, so far, you've covered the same amount of distance that you guys probably like uh, took you to get halfway towards the Arcanary. <laughs> twains, twains. Twains! I 
hate that that kind of matches what I'm fucking drawing right now. I'm so mad. Connery's head out the window shouting trains. Well, close. But, um, any any uh, conversations or activities you guys want to partake in during this downtime? Probably get some food at some point. Yeah, Midian's uh, going to attempt to eat this entire train out of House and Helm. Eat and drink. Save some for us, jeez. Why are you like this? Midian's a growing boy. <laughs> this isn't even his final form. I am not going to be drinking because I feel like the healer should be the designated driver. So to speak. Why are we even going to assume it? It's okay. Mitty will drink for you too. <laughs> In honor. <laughs> <laughs> Though that said, I am going to be spending uh, some of my uh, free time here uh, doing something I forgot to have been doing before, which is... Uh, reading that scroll and trying to figure out how to cast it as a sorcerer. Oh, the one you got from uh, the Arakai? Yeah, uh, Rack, was it right? Gotcha, yeah. Spending more time uh, just trying to figure out how to convert Wizard into shaping reality by my force of personality. I mean, don't you have to join a cult for that? I already did. The cult of personality. I explore you. <laughs> yeah, so I'll say Vinali. Make me just a straight intelligence check to start with, and then roll a, uh, for you, it's a charisma spellcasting check. Yes. <laughs> Not a great start. The eyes. Conry's first festival. Festival. What? The baby's awake. Okay. Well, so you you spend some time working on this scroll, and uh, I believe last time you worked on it, I had said you had a pretty good grasp of. Uh, how it worked, but weren't exactly sure how to translate that into how you practice magic. Yeah. You spend some time working on it, and, and you're starting to come up with some theories and ideas, but it's definitely not ready for execution yet. Yeah, I figured. I mean, it makes sense that it takes time, too, so. Mm -hmm. The dice tell a story. My candle just went out. What a shame. Burn the new one. Oh, I'm gonna... He was trying to finish off the last, like, half inch of wax that was in that one, but we bought two new ones today. So. E. Are you burning the layered one? Well, I haven't burned anything yet. Alright. Okay, and just to show off more of the map, uh, here are the dining and bar cars that you guys can feel free to annihilate. Maybe she will actually walk up to the bar and order a Bloody Mary extra spicy. Yuck. What? Uh, oh, the Bloody Mary. Never had a Bloody Mary with Tabasco with extra Tabasco? I can't say that I ever have, no. Mm, that's good. Yep. I, I, my favorite thing is like when you go to those um, 
like really, really great dive bars that have like the full course of meals with their Bloody Mary. Mm. Like get a fucking bratwurst in it, uh, like big all le- uh, big all head of lettuce. Yeah, not that's lettuce, good, broccoli, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> just it's like fully. Lit- yeah, but uh, you will notice, Mish, that the uh, attendant and and all of the wait staff and conductors here uh, on the lightning rail are dressed in the same. Uh, very spiffy, uh, sort of period-appropriate Victorian, almost like three-piece suit and top hat. Mm-hmm. But it is a uh, uh, another uh, what's the word half cat that is uh, the bar cart operator. Although compared to both yourself and um, such as the uh, the operator of the Curiosities Sheath. This uh, individual seems to have gotten the very hairy end of the spectrum. Oh my. He looks like he has um, his facial hair and his hair kind of blending together into something of a almost lion's mane. The rum tug tugger is a curious kind of cat. Yeah, I was even going to say I'm getting a just from looking at the the token i'm getting uh just a little bit of uh lion o vibes <laughs> okay i'm glad you said lionel and not you know the no, other lion o not lion no, i'm no, i'm glad you said that instead of the other thing what's well, the other thing so have you guys ever seen heard of a movie called cats yeah rum tum tugger i motherfucking said that i said the rum tum tugger is a curious kind of cat i didn't hear you over everyone else, so I'm sorry, but no, that's what that reminds me of. Yeah. If you offer him pheasant, he'd rather have grout. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, and uh, uh, as for the uh, cafeteria cart, you'll find uh, it attended to by a rather sweet human woman in her uh, early 20s or so, but despite what she might lack in years compared to some of the more seasoned cooks, she makes up for with gusto and has filled the tables with, uh, um, for some of you, much better food than you got in Defiance. <laughs> but it's, uh, a lot of the cuisine here is mostly of Twain descent, so you'll find a lot of uh, um, what's the word sort of california style vegetables uh not really seasoned just sort of steamed uh very well cooked uh trending on the light side meats um, not a lot of uh unkosher things um just based on the the palate there and some uh, on every table a very uh heavy carafe of uh extremely rich and flavorful gravy <laughs> Yeah, Mitty is going to uh, uh, say to the uh, the kind attendant, uh, I apologize for what you're about to witness, but I need you to do me a favor and keep it coming. Uh, pretty much from the moment you entered the car, she's just going to like, have dropped the utensils she was holding, look up at you, and she'll just say, Oh, right, okay. And you'll just see her, like, um, push up her shirt sleeves. <laughs> You're going to need a lot of gravy. For some reason, I thought she was going to say, Ah, yes, finally, a worthy challenger. <laughs> Our battle shall be legendary. <laughs> so, yes, you guys, uh, whether you're your poison be liquor or your poison be gravy. Um, you you can all find a rather large amount of sustenance to be had on this cart. Um, your deluxe packages seem to have afforded you um, pretty healthy uh, leniency in terms of what you're allowed to partake in. But uh, to be clear, neither of the attendants ever stop you from continuing to load your plate or glasses. Oh, God. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going until I either pass out or uh, someone actually has the balls to try and stop me. Please don't pass out, because we're gonna get you back to bed. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna yeah, sleep get... on the floor of the bar cart in that case. Like, at least yeah, we, take we the cannot last transport you between cars. That's <gasps> not gonna happen. Connery's probably gonna eat at most two plates. Can't eat much more than that without making himself sick. But he's gonna eat them with gusto. Alright. Biddy has a mighty hunger. I just have, like, the, this uh, weird mental image in my head of uh, Vinali, Connery, and Mitty all in the dining car together, and Vinali is the only one using utensils. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mitch uses <laughs> utensils. I, yeah, we have utensils. They're called fingers. No, but she actually uses, like, a knife and fork and all that. I have teeth. <laughs> You, you guys have seen Brave? Yeah. It's like the scene where the um, the mother just like starts digging into that fish all <laughs> dirty and then cleans up and daintily wipes her mouth with the with a leaf. Uh. Alrighty, so uh, a very um, fulfilling evening is had uh, by the time you guys finish spending your uh, meal in the these between these two carts. It's darkness has well fallen outside and probably is getting towards the uh, uh, late evening. Someone make Mitty stop eating so he can <laughs> Now let's see. Uh, roll a Constitution check for me, Mitty. Yeah. Do a, a contest with uh, the ladies' cooking skills. <laughs> I love. It. Okay. Uh, you said save, right? Uh, just a check. Oh, check. Okay. Oof. <laughs> wow. Uh, twelve and twelve. Okay, so that that will match. So she's able to keep up with you. <laughs> Our battle will be legendary. <laughs> May she were. Right. Okay, uh, make another roll. All right, all right. Uh... Slightly better. Yeah, she rolled really high. So uh, uh, as the first hour of consumption passes, she's still uh, somehow managing to not only keep your your. Uh, table full, but she's even attending to other guests as they make their way in. I must eat more. Granted, how many guests come in and stay after they see a bear eating at the table? Yeah, a, no sick and leave. Just come a, a number of them probably take their turkey legs to go. <laughs> Alright, so let's do one more. I, I imagine Fuck. we hear quite a few they let anybody in the high class cars these days. <laughs> yeah, probably. All the while, Mish is just sipping her drink. You know, I was gonna get something to eat, but, uh, you know, I, I think I'll wait till he's done. Okay, right. so I was giving her a modifier of plus three, uh, and she rolled a seven, so. <laughs> you actually oh. out eat her? No, she outcooks him. Oh. <laughs> I, I haven't rolled him over time. Yeah, correct. <laughs> hey, we oh. have to slow down eventually. Hey, are you done? Can the rest of us get something? Yeah, so o over the course of an hour, Mitty does his best, but in this respect, uh, young Urso, you have met your match in this uh, human woman half your size. <laughs> Mitty will, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll finish, um, the, uh, the plate. And then he'll stand. And, uh, he will, uh, he'll turn to the lady and, uh, bow to her and say, uh, I can see in defeat. You are a chef of <laughs> fine magnitude. 
it is now time for sleep. And then he will uh, kind of like groggily, half drunkenly uh, make his way uh, back to his room. But like before actually leaving the cart, he'll turn back around towards her, pull out a uh, a pouch filled with gold, and give her. Uh, let's see, he's he's wasted, so we'll say all of it. Fifteen gold. All right, she'll she'll take the gold and uh, give you a a hearty clap on. Uh, I would say the shoulder, but as high on your arm as she can reach. <laughs> she'll just, uh, well, it was a good competition with you. Uh, uh, she'll look past you to like uh, Connery or whoever, and it's like, maybe get him to bed, though. Yeah. <laughs> as he's being yeah. escorted out, he'll like yell out, the bards will sing of this dude. Connery on his shoulders again. Let's see if he doesn't. You're, you're like leveraging Midi up, up against the ceiling so he doesn't fall. Yeah, exactly. To to the last uh, people in the dining cart, you will see as Midi leaves, um, the woman walks over to uh, rather inconspicuous, like a, a slice of a log. Like a it's not not a cut piece of wood, but just like a cross section of of wood that she has hanging up on the door or uh, on the wall somewhere it has a number of scratch marks like tallies in it she just adds one more to it <laughs> <laughs> wow nice Hamish stop trying to escape what <laughs> Hamish not Hamish <laughs> Hamish only trying my, my answer he wishes for freedom he's trying to <laughs> He would like a plate of food. Huh? He would like a plate of food. He's already had his food. So yeah, Midi will uh, uh, be led back to his room and fall asleep. And at that point, uh, since it's the start of his rest, uh, I would like to go ahead and activate my bestial soul and uh, gain the ability to climb ceiling. <laughs> okay. Be the ability to digest whatever you ate. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> right now, if Mitty were to climb up onto the ceiling and drop down on an enemy, he would just <laughs> kill them. So uh, uh, there's no we, fall damage, none of that. They're just dead. Well, we haven't gotten to it yet, but the plan was to uh, uh, wake up uh, on the ceiling. <laughs> Spider bear, spider bear. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, you had one hell of a dream, that's for sure. <laughs> now come back here. Yeah, okay. I am, I am ready. Assuming nothing else happens, I am ready to help Cal pull off a uh, a train heist. I would be down. That's to investigate. No, the night is the time to do it. It's nice and dark. What is this, Train 5? Doesn't sound as good as Ocean's Eleven Act. Alright, so you guys are going to try and ransack the uh, storage car. I've seen right. Red Dead Redemption being played. It all works out. It's I'm fine. Sure. Yeah, nothing bad ever happens in a train hike. Is there a window in the door? A uh, window in the door? Uh, for that, I would say there's like a little porthole kind of thing, only large enough to just make sure no one's like right on the other side of the door. You feel me? Can I... Am I able to tell if there's like... <laughs> I was going to ask if I can, like, look through that one to look through the next one, but that's probably a dumb idea, and I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, You look through it, and uh, you can tell that there's no one, like, creepily standing out on the landing, 
but it's dark enough and seemingly dark, like completely pitch black in the storage cart, such that you can't really see anything inside from across the way. Question. Yes. How big is my uh, invisibility cloak? Uh, large enough for you to um, sort of have your torso covered. Uh, you'd have to like kind of scrunch under it to like be completely invisible, if that makes sense. It, it's a mantle, not like a, a Harry Potter cloak. Okay. So it wouldn't fit both of us. No, it's it's personal use only and it's attunement anyway. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. I mean I can yeah. go My assistance is mostly going to come in the form of guidance. <laughs> I can try to go ahead of him with it on just to try to have a little more sneak. Sneaky sneaky. Okay, so you're letting people uh, start to get settled for the evening, your party members included, and then you're going to go uh, sneak into the other car? Mm-hmm. Alrighty, one sec. If the rest of our party is asleep, it gives us plausible deniability. That and, like, I imagine Mitty is uh, snoring really loud. So, uh, the monstrous sound keep people from Mitty, actually uh, exploring. Are you sleeping in the hallway, Mitty? No. Okay. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Did I make it to the... We can imagine them just letting him fall once they break their own. That is a giant speed bump. Yeah, and the thing is, I was gonna say, Misha's probably still at the bar. We're just, like, eating, like, bar snacks and just making idle chatter. What level spell is Idle Chatter? I think it's like a level 10 social spell. Oh, that's why I don't have it. Same. Okay. Well, that's okay. So when Mish comes back, there's a door for you hit Mitty. So you can go into that room. Okay, so Mitty's asleep. Mish is still uh, trying to get wasted. Um, and I know the two elves are doing the highest. What were you doing, Conry? Connery's snoozing. He made it to bed before Mitty blocked the hallway. <laughs> Connery's like, I'm not gonna get any sleep if Mitty falls asleep before I do, so, uh... Yeah. So, punched himself in the face? Connery can just fall asleep whenever he wants. Okay. Alright, so... What is the plan, then, Elf Gang? I am, for the moment, just casting Guidance on Cal. Because right. I know I'm not an amazing uh, sneak thief. Yeah, you do have a few uh, things that could help with that. Do I? Just cover Cal in magical darkness. <laughs> True. <laughs> Though I think neither one of us could see through it. Because I think Cal would have to be attuned to it to see through it. If I remember the description. As far as you know... So yeah, so you're casting Guidance, and Cal, you're just going to go quickly between cars, or what is your plan? Yeah, um, I will put on the... What is the word? The photo limbic hide and try to skedaddle between the car the cars. Okay, so uh, first things first, make me a stealth check. So this will be at advantage because of the hide, and also you get a d4 because of guidance. Uh, she doesn't have to use it if she rolls well, but she can. You said this is at advantage? Correct. Alright, 19. Yeah, the guidance lasts up to a minute. Okay, so I've got a couple turns to 
need it. Yeah. Okie dokie. I think I'm good with my 19. Alright, so Cal opens the door uh, between cards and with the, the cloak already activated. Vanali, you see uh, the sort of hide jacket that Cal has been wearing uh, seemingly responds to the, the mental input and goes in that um, weird camo cloaking sci-fi way and just Cal disappears before you. You step your exclamation sound. <laughs> yeah. You you step between the cars. Uh, the door behind you swings shut. You go to uh, put your hand on the uh, door door leading to the storage cart, and a couple things are gonna uh, stand out to you. The first one is you hear a little bit of movement uh, inside the cart. Second thing. The door to this uh, to the storage cart appears to be locked. Third thing, uh, you at some point during the travels uh, of the train must have gotten close enough to the foglands that you can see the uh, uh, the gray expanse now. Uh, your train is actually not very far from it. It couldn't be more than a couple hundred feet. So you can see the billowing wall of gray uh, off to your left, even though uh, the rest of the surroundings seem to be consumed by the, the night sky. Even through the darkness, you can somehow identify the fog. Do I... I heard movement. Do I immediately see anybody through the porthole on the other door? Again, it, it really is pitch black in there. Okay. You, you don't see anything. Can I use my thieves tools to try to lockpick the door? It's not a traditional lock. You're welcome to try and use some of the tools to like uh, uh, shimmy through the, the crack in the door and sort of maybe move whatever lever or something is blocking this. Given that you are outside on a train going very fast and the wind's whipping through your hair and the cloak, it's going to be really hard. <laughs> but you're welcome to try. This is a skill you're good at. I'm just saying there's there's risk involved with it. I do have a couple of things that might help. Uh, I have a crowbar, I have some pitons, and I have a uh, one of those like tiny look around the corner mirrors. I mean, I do have the jelly poppers, but that's probably gonna make a ruckus if it would fit. One of them would fit under the door, but <laughs> just tactical grenade it. <laughs> Flashback going on. Uh, I'll, I'll give it, it I a... mean, it is basically debt cord, isn't it? <laughs> is this door... Is this, is this door what my mystery key goes to that I just remembered I had in my inventory? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay, so you're going to try and pick the uh, train door outside of it going 50 miles an hour. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? As Since it's a, a relatively small area, why don't I... Oh no, I forgot it! I was going to say, why don't I uh, Liam's tiny hut? But I forgot it to make room. Is there any way for me to get up on top of the car? Like, is there a little ladder? Yeah, of course, there's ways to climb up. Okay, I'll do that instead. Okay. Uh, let me... Since yeah, we so painstakingly made that map, for us to get on top of it. Okay, so... You shimmy your way up on top of the uh, cart ahead of your... 
um, uh, what's the word? Uh, ahead of the cart that you and your friends are staying in. Uh, one more second. Because I actually can. There you go. You can actually see the car ahead of you with the cannon sticking out of it. Uh, but I hope they don't aim that at you. Was that ever explained? That's the dragon yeah. cannon? Oh, okay. I was having a brain fart. I'm sorry. It would be a little more alarming if you looked ahead of you and you saw the cannon come out, turn, and aim at you. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Some sort of demon. That sounded like Hamish going beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> Awakening, is it? <laughs> is it her midi? But yeah, um, so you are on top of uh, the storage cart. You see that there are uh, two hatches, one near and one far. Um, but otherwise, uh, the, again, you, the wind is whipping rather quickly past you, so you are definitely having to like squat and, and try and make sure you hold on to the slick surface. Can I try and open the closest hatch? See if it's locked? Yeah, you go to uh, uh, start fussing with it. You, uh, it, it starts to stick, and you feel like it might be locked at first. But after uh, filling with it for a minute and just having to put elbow grease in it, there is a um, depressurization, release of air, as it starts to come up just a, a quick lurch into your hands. Am I able to drop down from there and then try to work on the door for Vanali? Don't forget you heard movement in there. That is true. Well, so, so for the moment, you've just, like, cracked it. Do you wish to open the hatch all the way? Yeah. Okay, so you... Uh, put more elbow grease into it uh, very nearly and, and, and wind up very nearly having to catch yourself from falling off as with a sudden ungreased uh, lurch the the hatch opens all the way up and it, it the debalancing you very nearly makes you slide off the top of the roof even in the darkness you see as the hatch opens a gout of fog opens up from the uh cart below you. Does it look like the fog that's outside? Uh, uh, yeah, I would definitely say so. And uh, uh, there's a, a heavy magical presence to it. it it's it, How do I say this? Within lists, no one would make the mistake of mistaking the capital F fog with the normal phenomenon. You drop down and come face to face with another fog dragon. A smaller one. A uh, fog wormling. Fog dragon junior. Um. Do I hear any more movement in there? Uh, as you opened the hatch, uh, there was the gout of fog, and it, even after the first sort of geyser um, it continues to sort of pour out of the lip you heard a lot of movement that suddenly stopped and goes deathly quiet I have if I were to use my elf light to look to shine that down into the cabin I would still be invisible right 
Uh, as far as you know, yes. Did Wait. I hear the hatch open? Was that loud? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I would say it was. Even with the, the previous door having closed, it was loud enough to hear in your cabin. And I think I might make my way a little bit closer. Just, uh hang out in between the cars. Alrighty. In case there's trouble. You, do you have the the card for the L flight, or should I still have that? I don't know if you wrote the description of it down. I'm clicking on it and it's not doing anything. No, all I have in here is Elf Light. It's incredibly helpful, I know. I'm just trying to remember uh, how exactly it worked. Oh, it's in the chat. Is that yeah. it? Oh god, what is that? What? That face. What's wrong with it? It looks terrifying. <laughs> it's kitty. What's wrong with yeah, kitty? so it would, um... It, it would sort of surround you in an aura of 30 feet. So you could try and dangle it down, but it's... A bright enough light, it would be no mistake where it was coming from. I should have given you my collapsible chest so you could fill it up with shit. Oh, sorry. That was an accident. Well, so, so were you wanting to light the cabin up? Why do I? Can I drop it? And then run to the other one? No, just so it's not immediately illuminating me. So the the way I worded that item is that it only works when you're holding it. Okay, okay. Yeah, then I'll 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 pull it down and, and see what see what I can see. So you see, and and, and you're you are still technically above, as the uh, light illuminates most of the uh, storage cabin here. You see. An absolute fuck ton of, of checked boxes and dressers and safes and barrels of things. Um, you see what mysteriously looks like it might have been a um, uh, something that contained a, a living creature, like livestock or something, that is mysteriously empty now. And there's some like uh, white feathers in it. But uh, the more pressing matters are... The entire cabin is filled with a uh, low level of the fog. You see the very bloodied corpse of the goblin attendant that had been waiting on you earlier. And you see a number of uh, white robed and sort of black hooded figures sort of pressed against the sides of the uh, cabin, who, despite having their eyes covered, all seem to turn and look at you as the light lowers uh, into the cabin. Okay. So w what is your immediate knee-jerk reaction?
Well, my first thought was to throw a fire jelly in there, slam the door shut, and go back to our cabin. <laughs> hmm. I'm assuming you, you didn't prep a fire jelly in your hand. Correct. Okay, so as you go to reach for that item, I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, Cal, you become paralyzed. You go stock still and uh, unbalanced as you were fall through into the cart. Um, Vinali, from your uh, perch outside, you saw a brief uh, flash of light illuminate the cabin inside, uh, almost like glaringly bright, such that the porthole was just yellow instead of black. And then it faded as you heard a person-sized thump fall inside the cabin. Okay, I am going to, uh, assuming that somebody just got knocked out, I don't know who, but I don't, uh, actually, yeah, I wouldn't know, so I am going to, uh, cast Sending to see if I can reach out to Cal, because I'm trying okay. to be quiet about it. So, uh... How does how does that work with um, paralysis? Is it a mental thing that they communicate through? Uh, hears the message in its mind, recognizes you as the sender, and can answer in a like in a like manner immediately. Okay, so so it's telepathic, technically. Yeah. Okay, so what is the message that you send? Uh, heard a thud. Are you okay in there? Should I get the others? So, Cal, you hear that in your mind as uh, you're lying there uh, face down in a unable to move from your scrunched position. So you're like in a, a, a frozen cannonball almost. Mm hmm. You're, you're lying face down on the cold metal of this car, and you hear a number of figures uh, begin to surround you. The message of Vinali finishes uh, playing in your mind as the first of the daggers pierces your flesh. Well, I mean, do I really need to reply back if I yell? <laughs> But you can't, well, you yell, can't, as can't well. yell. You're paralyzed. Okay. Yell in your brain. I mean, yeah. Being stabbed. Bad time. Kind of hurts. Call back to the Please get help. The number you're trying to reach is being disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. I require... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I require aid in the form of murdering these bitches. So, so what message do you actually send to Benali? Uh... I need healing. Need help. Dead body. And then probably a screech of some variety from being stabbed. So let me roll this. <sighs> okay. He has advantage because you're paralyzed, but fucker legitimately rolled a two almost at first. <laughs> Woo! But, uh... Yeah, attack rolls have advantage, and attack rolls hit the creature as a critical hit if the attacker's within five feet. Alright, so... You take eight damage from that one. Uh, 
and then does a uh, does a I don't think a thirteen hits your AC. No. Okay, it misses a paralyzed target, but you took eight damage. <laughs> Like that scene in Futurama where they're launching the rocket and Fry misses the button. Yep. Okay, so you get stabbed. Uh, some somehow <laughs> manage to avoid being stabbed twice, but um, Vanali, you hear the uh, response from your message. Okay, I will. Uh... Already having been kind of preparing to have to go in, uh, I would have been uh, fishing the uh, crowbar out of my backpack. And uh, we'll duck back into our cabin, bang on the wall of the nearest room with the crowbar a few times to kind of get everybody up and then uh, head back to start trying to pry the door open. All right, so... Midi, Conry, uh, you two are um, jostled awake by the clamorous sound of metal on fine varnished wood. Mm -hmm. Midi, what, wake up and a half are we under attack? Silence. I'm already back outside. <laughs> ah. Midi will uh, rush out the door to find, figure out where that sound came from. Alrighty. Uh, I would not have closed the door again, so the door between the cabins is open. So, Mish, you, you said you were going to stay in the bar for the entire time? That, like, at least trying to talk to people and such like that. Or did you actually have a... a objective in mind uh pretty much to learn more about the faction trying to kill us basically because like from what she understands they're a religious group and she's also from a religious group so she'd like to learn what exactly okay. their deal is so i guess i'll ask a uh, bit more specific question do you want to know about the Dreaming Queen's disciples are like meth uh, uh, sort of uh, what's the word? Like their methodologies. Uh, yeah, like there's a different they word. Not methodology. What's what's their the word like? Religious belief. I'm, I'm, there's a word for that. Doctrine. I'm Doctrine. Like yeah. 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 Just, for the most part. What was I saying? Do you do you want to know that generally? Do you want to know like about the Order of Silence? like specifically their actions or something or just about the Lucindis broadly like I guess what what specifically are you hoping to learn she's hoping to learn how they operate she's hoping to learn why they believe what they believe in and she's also wants to know how much information they have on the group they're hunting aka us okay uh the dinner guests and uh, patrons of this car are likely not to have, you know, all of that information. But go ahead and make a uh, make a general persuasion check to see how how well you schmooze during this time. Well, for schmooze. You said persuasion. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh god. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, and then also to answer some of your th your questions, because you, you, you are a holy person, make a religion check. You might actually know some of that yourself. <laughs> yeah, okay, the dice are being nice tonight. Okay, so I will say... Um, I'm sorry to, to derail the suspense for a second, but um, this should have been handled, I guess, before the combat started. Um, you would know from your studies and as a disciple of uh, Agiateus, you learned a few things, you know, at least uh, nominally about some of the other major religions. 
um, specifically the Dreaming Queen's uh, theology as it stands in a lot of ways oppositionally towards many of the spiritualities of the old world. Um, whatever you believe, the teachings of the Dreaming Queen are that Tethys fell to some awful, unknowable calamity that wiped out the Empire literally overnight, and that if people knew what that was, it would happen again. So keeping, like, keeping the secret, keeping the fate of Tethys hidden and obscured by the fog as far as their theology goes, is a matter of literal life or death safety. The queen is doing what she's doing, and her church is doing what it's doing to prevent the rest of the world from meeting Tethys's fate. Uh-huh. So people like you guys that go into the Foglands and poke with their noses around and aren't content with letting things, like letting sleeping dogs lie, are selfish, reckless, and literally endangering the lives of everyone else to sake your own curiosities. Well, that's rude. I think it's selfish not to pet the Ozu Bozer. If the, if the dog is just going to be sleeping there, it deserves pets. <laughs> I would agree with that sentiment. You will get from your schmoozing that um, the Order of Silence has been around these parts for a long time. Um, they do operate in Alea to try and help keep uh, try, trying to be a counterbalance against the Delvers and the Hunters to try and stop them from digging too deeply. Uh, they mm-hmm. operate in, they've operated at a Twain for a long time. The, uh, the trade baron there has a working relationship with the secret keeper that was appointed to this region. He uh, gives concessions to them uh, as needed to keep Twain and Lucindy on the good economic relationships and things like that. So and that, that meshes with things you'd heard from uh, the Huntmaster back in uh, defiance as well. Okay. You don't really get anything specific about like a current quarry or anything. Most of these people don't know anything that uh, up to date, but they're around. They, they, they operate in Twain. They uh, generally get on the nerves of every hunter and delver around because they don't like them. Mm. But as you're uh, starting to return from your evening of schmoozing, you'll notice as you get back into uh, you, your all's car that the other doors open and all of your uh, um, teammates seem to be in the process of trying to smash through the, the door to the storage car. Why? Like, Mitch will just, like, seeing that, we'll just sober up a bit and just deadpan ask, Okay, why are we destroying property? I assume that uh, Val would have told, uh, Benali would have told everyone. Yeah, once everybody was, uh, like, gathered up behind me, I'd uh, alert them that uh, our good friend Cal is being stabbed to death. You said not to start things. We didn't start this. Okay, uh, make me another wisdom save, Cal. Excellent. Excellent. I'm getting dumber by the by the roll. Not dumber. You're just uh, still paralyzed. You are. Uh... How? How does he miss a paralyzed person? <laughs> It's just hitting the right parts of the armor to block it. Yeah. I still have that invisibility cloak on, and I'm actually probably thinner than I look. Okay, 
Well, uh, one of them is going to hit you, so you'll take four more damage. Rolling awfully. Uh, okay. But yeah, so the, the rest of you are um, outside the uh, the tranker. You said you were trying to good at it with the crowbar, uh, Vinali? Yeah. Crackle fungus is the stuff that explodes, right? No, crackle fungus is speed. Oh, the other stuff was the stuff. Okay, I don't have. Yeah, yeah. that's the jelly poppers. Jelly poppers explode. Should have gotten more of those. I have them. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll have to split them up after I don't die. Yeah, I I would tell some of them. Uh, I think Cal got in from the top. If you want to try going in that way. Ah, uh, so like, is the door just locked or something? Yeah, it is. It's a sliding door, and it seems that it's been barred on the other side. Okay, so uh, and Mitty has been informed that uh, the uh, a friend is on the other side currently being murdered, right? Mm hmm. Okay, I think this is as good a time as any to rage and try and bash the door down. Go, Mitty! Right, I am going to climb up to get out of Mitty's way. <laughs> <laughs> Already behind them. Connery's gonna follow up onto the roof. At least, or back up, back into the other. Give Mitty space. Okay. So, you rage and you go hog wild. Make me a athletics check at advantage, Mitty. Yeah. I'll give him guidance too because uh, I feel like Cal is beyond using it at this point. Oh, where is. Oh, what is he suspended? Oh. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you can add, oh yeah, I was just gonna say, you can add a d4, but the, yeah, yeah, that doesn't help. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm not rolling too old today. Yeah, the dice do tell a story. He beat himself into a coma, so. Maybe he's too <laughs> fat and lethargic. Really. Shake the lethargy off. Okay, so from your, your position face down uh, on the floor, Cal, you do hear a uh, really discordant screeching sound as, uh, what would that be? Eight uh, taloned bear fingers force their way through the uh, uh, gap between the door and the wall and start to like try and pull uh, the metal apart. It's it's a work in progress. It's occurring, but it's not the uh, instant Hulk door off the hinges that you were hoping for. Sure. Uh, those of you uh, that were going on to the top of the train, um, I think given the haste at which you're going, if you could both make me acrobatics check. Oh, this ends well. Ooh. To, uh, there'll be Connery and uh, Vinali. Oh, Connery just backed into the other cart. Oh, you you weren't climbing on top the no. the other one. Oh, okay, just so into the cart behind them to give uh, Mitty space. Nice. So I have no qualms. Also, guiding myself at this point. <laughs> if it's just me, I am not falling off to my death. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, I could still roll a natural one. Since you're up there, you could probably get in through the hatch. Uh, one would hope. Yeah, we're just seeing how well he keeps his balance up there. Which, actually, pretty well. So, uh, it, it's... You could see how someone could easily lose their footing up here. It's dangerous with this, this maneuver. Especially trying to go with a bit of haste. But you scramble up on top of the cart, and you do see the, uh, uh, hatch open that Cal left. Do I see uh, Cal down below? Uh, I would say as you scramble through, yeah, you would see uh, uh, the elf uh, surrounded, or like I said, he's he is face down, kind of scrunched up in a uh, 
definitely that. unnatural contortion that that's not downward facing dog. <laughs> but there are uh, two of these uh, white robed sort of black uh, uh, cowled um, individuals that are just like hacking into his back with knives and some of them oh, yeah. somehow uh, scraping against the leather. <laughs> I thought those were pompadours on their head. <laughs> pompadours. Okay, which, uh... They're all tunnel snakes. Tunnel snakes rule. Tunnel snakes rule. Make me uh, another wisdom save. Uh, uh, cow. <laughs> hey! Getting stabbed got me, uh, cleared my head a little bit. So actually, as you hear the screeching of the door, and as, uh, Benali's face appears in the hatch above, uh, you, your body goes limp and, uh, sort of sags against the floor as the paralysis fails, but they're still going to stab you. Very cool. Uh, but it's on an advantage now, and because of that, uh, they're going to roll a lot better. So that's a 20 to hit, and oh, that's an 8. Um, I like to imagine it's the same one that just keeps missing. God damn it, Jerry! That's <laughs> why we don't take you anywhere. Okay, you take uh, 4 damage from that one. Okie dokie. So, uh, in this moment that Cal is sort of rallying, Midi is about to tear the door off its hinges, you have a, a instant here where you could uh, do something from the hatch. Would you like? What would you like to do, Vanali? Uh, I would like to... Uh... Well, how beat up does Cal look? I imagine not looking so hot. He's he's got a few stab wounds, but he doesn't look like um uh, he's been tenderized meat. I'm if that makes sense. Out. I think I'll be couple. okay. Okay, in that case, I will drop a. Uh... You know what? I'll drop a moonbeam right in right here, so I get both of them. Alrighty. But that, that works technically at the start of their turn, right? Yes. Alrighty. So I think that's where we will start with the uh, door being torn off its hinges. Uh, people will file in, initiatives will be rolled. So before we get into this combat, we'll take a quick five-minute break. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good, yeah. 